So I've been tasked with the last talk, and I, I thank you all for sticking through, and we'll get to the question and answer on time. Uh, but I always like to talk about the, the next uh, frontier and uh, it just is what's coming up, what we're gonna look at in clinical trials, uh, and what's gonna be available in the clinic. Uh, and I, I, I tried to think of a theme, and um, I, I, I wanted a picture to put up, and I was hoping that nobody would take my picture. So I, 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 took, I picked dueling banjos. And dueling banjos makes a lot of sense when you see this picture. Okay, maybe it doesn't, but... <laughs> Uh, but you can talk about targeted therapy and immunotherapy, um, dueling to get, your pa to, to get the patients on and understanding which one is better and how they go. Um, uh, but you can talk about, you know, in, I have an eight-year-old son, and he, he, this picture has different meaning to them because the Muppets are now back and relevant, and uh, Steve Martin is now relevant in kids' movies, no longer comedy and the other stuff that were important. So newer therapies are not just new, there are older therapies that we figure out how to work together with. And then when I Googled dueling banjos, this came up. And I, I just, it's on a Funny or Die website, but I, 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 I was so in, in, into seeing what this was about, and it's a, as Kermit starts to play and Steve starts to try and keep up with Kermit, they ultimately end up working together and playing a melody that is so much better together than alone. And that's what's happening with targeted agents and immunotherapies and different immunotherapies and immunotherapies combined and uh, dual, all of it coming together. So I made this picture work uh, <laughs> without bikinis. So how is that happening? Well, and, and these are going to be quick, uh, but these are coming to the clinic. And uh, we've talked about BRAF mech, and l very few people know that ERK is down there, and we can inhibit ERK. And uh, this is an ERK inhibitor from uh, one pharmaceutical company, but I just learned last night someone here has another one, and we'll be coming for it. And the combinations together and upcoming trials of immunotherapy and ERK inhibition are, are coming. And these are available to those patients who may or may not have BRAF mutations or may or may not have failed BRAF targeted agents. And these are part of what is coming forward in order to give more options for patients. It was very hard 10 years ago to say we've gone through every option and now I'm going to try something that has no scientific rationale. But we've spent the whole day talking about the rationale behind these therapies. And this is just the next step in that rationale. Through our collaborations with multiple different foundations, uh, we are understanding how antivascular agents uh, like Avast and that target the vessels that make up your tumor work. And this is just one trial looking at combination BRAF, not with immunotherapy, sort of, but with antivascular therapy. But what we're also learning is antivascular therapy does interact with the immune system. So this trial is ongoing. Uh, I won't belabor XL184. This is my, one of my favorite drugs. And it's got great response in, in melanoma patients. It's an oral pill. And it's a dirty inhibitor. It targets CMAT, VEGF, and other targets. And we're trying to understand what's going on. And our friends at Dana-Farber and other institutions are looking not only in this drug, so it does MET and VEGF and angiogenesis, but also MET has been thought of as an escape for other targeted agents and uh, to fail. But not only in cutaneous melanoma, that's these dark blues, but also ocular melanoma, these light blues, those ocular melanoma patients who are saying that, oh my god, I must have finished everything there is. Look at this data. And not only in patients who are mutated in, in uh, GNAQ, GNA11, or RAS, or BRAF, but those patients who are not this totally white square down there that those are no mutation but response. So we're finding newer drugs that are working. And we're finding drugs that are targeted, but targeted chemotherapies. You know, when I was a kid, Kermit the Frog was in the Muppets movie. That's chemotherapy. 
old, but now it's new. These are, this is a, a trial ongoing in multiple sites that uh, Dr. Carvajal uh, introduced me to. And uh, this is a, a drug that targets tumor hypoxia. Now, you know, normal tissue has adequate nutrient and oxygen supply that's brought by our uh, veins and our, uh, and our arteries. With tumor, there may be occlusion and breaks in these vessels that cause the oxygen that normal tissues need to go away. And so these abnormalities lead to environments where tumors uh, can, can grow because traditional chemotherapy can't get in, radiation doesn't work well, and then the fact that these cells that are under the hypoxic environment, the low oxygen environment, can mutate and become more aggressive. So we use these for selective targeting by hypoxia-activated prodrugs. These are drugs that target those hypoxic areas and work better for the tumors in that area. And this drug is now in, in, uh, at multiple sites uh, looking to treat patients with melanoma. And here's some early data on a patient who's had chemo before and is treated with this drug. And you can see there's response. They told me CTs are more convincing than survival graphs. But you can see here that these tumors are resolving. And so you can put these in and put them together with other chemotherapeutics and other antiangiogenics targeted agents and make them better. So this is another combination. This is not all targeted, targeted. It's not all immuno, immuno or targeted immuno. Chemo now has a role in the right way, an intelligent design. <clears throat> I also uh, worked hard to find this, just Google Trojan horse. But antibody drug conjugates uh, are coming in multiple different tumor types. Uh, they are standard in metastatic breast cancer. Uh, this is an antibody that targets a protein that's upregulated selectively in tumors and then takes a payload in, a chemotherapeutic or radiation or something else. And you can see here the antibody with the payload. And once it gets in, antibody binds, it gets in, it releases the payload, and causes these, drug, uh, these tumors to pass. And these trials are ongoing. Uh, oncolytic therapy, a new, a new and improved way to deliver direct, uh, direct tumor kill that can work to eradicate metastatic disease. We know that using viruses to take DNA into cells is important. Viruses replicate in those tumors, and they always cause the cells that they infect to die. And you're familiar with this because it was presented. This is TVEC, and it causes those cells to die. It codes for a genetic code that causes an immune uh, flare, and then it causes the tumors to, not only in the injected areas, but the distal areas to go away. And we showed these at six months, not only local, local effects, but distant effects. But hey, I'm not here to show you the same slide. This is a, a liver cancer that responded. And then after a while of not getting therapy, it grew. And then with reinjection, it went away again. So this is something we can come to multiple different times. But also, we're understanding how to take a payload together. This is not my paper, but this is a oncolytic virus that codes an antibody specific for CTLA-4. So this is a way you can take oncolytic viruses and put a payload of ipilimumab in them. Uh, and the benefits here are huge. I don't like to talk finance, but because these viruses replicate and they continue to disperse through the body, you can see a situation where they target directly the CTLA-4 into the area of the tumor, so less toxicity, and they continue to replicate. So we don't need to give you one dose every three weeks and give you maintenance. This is maintenance in your own body. So oncolytic therapy is coming forward. 
Carvajal took my slide, but uh, the talk has been big about inhibiting these inhibitory receptors that are like the break on your immune system, anti-CTLA-4 and anti-PD-1. But we are currently looking at OX40 stimulating these activating receptors, stimulating GITR and other targets. So we have targets uh, in clinical trials for CD137, GITR, OX40. Uh, you don't have to learn them, but you, what you have to know is that not only are they coming forward in clinical trials as single agents, but they're already in combination. Uh, as you can see, the areas where they work. Uh, here's VEGF, that's what Avastin targets, so you can see that there are targets of these checkpoint inhibitors with anti-VEGF agents. Steve Hody presented some of that data of Avastin and ipilimumab. You can see that there are IDO inhibitors in clinical trial that we have right now that help with the tumor environment, but also all of these uh, inhibitory checkpoints and all of these activating checkpoints. GITR is an at agonist stimulator for effective T cell function. So if you don't have stimulus, there's the reduced expansion, reduced inflammation in that area, and what we see is reduced activity. But with activating uh, GITR through antibodies similar to what was presented to you on how to activate PD-1, um, how to inhibit PD-1, how to inhibit CTLA-4, by activating GITR we can get responses. OX40 is a similar thing. OX40 augments that helps T cell memory response. And it's distinct from anti-CTLA-4. These are different targets that can work together. And there are currently phase one uh, OX40 trials that are coming to fruition. And there will be not one, not two, but three OX40 drugs coming forward in clinical trials for solid tumors and melanoma. And maybe someone in the room here has one of these drugs that, that drop in our clinics. So other immune checkpoints and immune molecules of interest, CD137. This drug was in our clinics five or six years ago, but we didn't know how to deal with it appropriately, and we had too much toxicity. And it went back into the vault until we realized how to dose it right and how to give it appropriately. And at this point, it's back. It's back in single agent and combination uh, trials. We're also looking at LAG3, TIM3. These are the other inhibitory uh, markers and more coming forward. Metabolites like indolamine deaminase, where if they're overexpressed in the tumor microenvironment, cause a suppression of the immune system. We have antibody, we have, uh, in, in, we have drug targets that can neutralize that. And currently there is a combination with uh, this IDO inhibitor and ipilimumab, but there are also combinations with anti-PD-1 therapy coming forward. And not only for melanoma. I would like to stress that 10 years ago, six years ago, five years ago, etc., as melanoma oncologists, we were looking towards therapy and looking for answers from our colleagues who did other solid tumors. Uh, we didn't have the answers, we didn't have the trials, we didn't have the molecules. And currently at this point, it's changed, it's totally flipped. Because of you, because of your involvement in clinical trials, not only have we made major advancements for the care of patients with metastatic melanoma, but this data and these trials have moved forward and are helping patients with lung cancer, ovarian cancer, kidney cancer, bladder cancer. So where once we looked for leadership, now through our programs, through our drugs, we are leading. So what else? Uh, immune checkpoint blockade still in early development. You know, the ip ipilimumab story is a 10-year-old story, but the PD-1 story is only a couple of years old, and everything else is coming at the same time. The future is likely in combinations with PD-1 and other inhibitors, targeted therapies with PD-1 like VEGF, 
radiation, where we haven't spoken much about in, in, in killing local tumor and eliciting a local immune response, and then bumping that up with uh, other immune modulatory agents or other targeted agents. Chemotherapy is important. As I've shown you, different formulations of chemotherapy or chemotherapy as an adjunct to get rid of T regulatory cells, those T cells that affect our, our killer cells, our, our army of T cells from working well, and of course, adoptive uh, cell therapy. All of these can work together. As we go forward, uh, <coughs> a newer agent is in clinical trials, and I'm going to just show you quickly what this does. Uh, we know that uh, the T cells target HLA presented peptides or proteins from the tumor, and they, and they come together here to, to kill the tumor. So here's a cancer cell. Here it is showing a piece of its protein, uh, and there's the T cell. And we've seen this T cell cancer cell interaction. Dr. Carvajal showed that to us. But what, if we can have a mechanism of action to grab the cancer cell and grab the T cell and say, hey, you two get together, you should dance. Uh, and, and this is what this agent does. It, it binds to GP100 and then it has a low affinity anti-CD3 which is expressed on T cells and it recruits those T cells and brings them together. And that's interesting. I mean, you can mock everything up here, but uh, I don't believe it until I see it under a microscope. And that's a microscopic picture of what this does. And in fact, what we want that T cell to do is then put out lytic granules and release a killing target to cause this cell. You can see how the cancer cell is, is breaking up and going away. Well, I don't believe that until I see that under a microscope. And there it is. And these are in phase one studies at multiple, uh, multiple locations. Here's a person day one, and by day eight, you can see the inflammation that's happening. On scans, you can see that the tumor is starting to liquefy inside, and then by one month, it's starting to reduce in size and go away. Again, one dose in a patient here, obviously showing that same necrosis, liquefaction, and uh, tumor resolution. So as I end, it's important to understand that uh, a couple of years ago, we thought the answer laid in just targeted therapy, and we thought the answer laid just in immunological therapies. Uh, but these curves have been presented to you, and our goal is to combine them to help to move this patient survival, patients alive at one, two, and three years. But in the past, when I put this up, this was only a construct. But you can see that this construct has been just shown to you of 25%, 45%, 65%, 81%. And as we end the talks and move on to the question and answer portion of this, I tell you that this is only the beginning and we have more to do together and more success together. And I thank you for listening.